Hi, everybody. This week we have the privilege of reading Parshas Emor. In Parshas Emor, we have the mitzvah of Usvartan Lachami Machas Shabbos Miom Habiach Mishomer Tznufa Sheva Shabbosos Tmimos Tiena. That we're supposed to count seven full complete weeks that are going to mark from the time we brought the Karban Omer, which was the second day of Pesach, when we start counting Sviras Omer, all the way until Matan Torah, until Chag HaShavuot. And in order to understand this mitzvah, uh, let's try to understand what happened during this time period and what we're marking. So we already referenced the Karban HaOmer being brought on the second day of Pesach and then culminating with Chag HaShavuot when we brought the Shtei HaLechem. But there is another uh, idea, which is that this is a time period during which Rabbi Kiva's Talmidim passed away. He lost 12,000 pairs, 24,000 students, and this is a time period of mourning. They passed away over this tkufa, 33 days within the time period of Svir Omer. Lagwa Omer is the day of respite, um, and there was no avelis that happened then, but their different opinions did happen the first 33 days of the count, latter 33 days of the count. And then the final count is that we're counting up to Matan Torah, that this is in anticipation of Kabbalah's HaTorah. Um, I'd like to understand these ideas according to the Shemi Shmuel, the Sachat Shavarav, the son of the Eglay Tal. And he starts off questioning what happened with Rebbe Kiva's Talmidim. Why did they die at this time period? And the fact that the Gemara Nivamos tells us on Dach Samach Beis Amaral Shalone Hagu Kavod Zebazet, that they didn't give the proper amount of respect from one Talmud to another, does that really warrant their deaths? Is that something that you're Chayv Misa for? And why Dafka? Do we mark their deaths during this time period? So Rav Chaim Vital in his Sefer Hagil Gulam explains that these 24,000 Talmidim of Rabbi Kiva were a reincarnation of the 24,000 members of Shevet Shimon that died at the Chait of Baal Peor, which happened in Sefer Bamidbar when uh, Shevet Shimon uh, committed a tremendous uh, kishuf uh, that they were committing witchcraft. And um, and this concept of committing witchcraft draws a person away from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Uh, it's interesting, you're consulting and trying to find out from something else, but it's not from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. You're too focused on yourself. You're too focused on your needs, your desires, what it is that you want. And that's why you're going towards this witchcraft. And this time period where Rekiva's Talmidim passing away was supposed to be a tikkun for the chait of these 24,000 members of Shevet Shimon. That they were going to be focused not on themselves, not on their ego, but rather how they could connect to others and how they could keep a Baruch Hu relevant in their life. And Rabbi Kiva's Talmidim didn't pick up on this message. They still were too focused only on themselves. Shalom Negu Kavod Zebazeh. And by being focused on themselves and not reaching out to other members and affording them the proper Kavod, this brought their downfall, this brought their death. In fact, it's interesting to note that Rabbi Kiva says on the Haftal Recha Kamocha, the mitzvah that appears in last week's parsha, Zeklal Gadol Batora. He says that this is an important principle in the Torah. And these are his very Talmidim that weren't observing this principle. And the way that you observe the Haftal Recha Kamocha is to start first with giving Kavod. Shalom Egu Kavod Zebazeh got them in trouble. And that led to their downfall of not being able to be Matakin Shevet Shimon, which says a lot to us about this time period, about us trying to still be Matakin, this idea of not being so focused on ourselves, but reaching out to others. And in fact, What's going on during this time period of being able to reach out to others and being able to be involved and aware of other people brings us to Matan Torah, where we stood that we understood the importance of Zulat Acher, the next person, and not to be so focused on yourself, but understand the importance of your fellow Jew. Now, this is not to say that an individual's own Koho don't matter. In fact, Shemi Shmuel points out, and he says, each of us have something that we are proficient in, but so does somebody else. They have something that they're proficient in. Where you lack, this other person can help fill in that gap. And that's the idea of the camaraderie and the achdus that can lead us to Matan Torah. 
that can help bring us together and understand the importance of one another. And in order to get to Matan Torah, we are counting Svira Omer. And the Shemesh Mul points out, they have to count for yourselves. Can someone else be motzi you in the midst of Svira Omer? Can you only count it for yourselves? Well, we see that when we actually do the count, the count is not only about what number of days we're up to, we also keep track of the weeks. And he, and he points out and he says that the days are about the prat, are about the individual, that we have to be thinking, where am I holding? What am I doing? But we also have to be very aware of the cloud of the week, what's going on in general, that this whole time period is going to be an attempt to work on the beetle hayesh, the, the, the idea that it's all in me, and instead also learn to connect to others. So we can see the Avelis time period of Rabbi Kiva is an attempt to be able to reach out to others and connect and be metaking the chayt of Shimon from Baal Peor, being too self-centered. And this can allow us to, to reach Matan Torah. This can allow us to reach Kabbalah Satora in a unified fashion, in a unified form. But let's not forget the beginning, which is the Pshat of the Psukim, which is that we're bringing the Karban HaOmer on the second day of Pesach, and that takes us all the way to the Shtei Alechem. What is the carbon omer? What does it consist of? It's the saora. It's the barley, which is the 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 food of animals, macha behema. And yet, the carbon omer is considered one of the elevated categories of carbonos, the kach, the kache kachim, as opposed to the kache kalim. Why is it on such a superior level of the kache kachim when it's macha behema? It's not even animal, an animal. It's nothing that can resemble nefesh tachas nefesh explains the Shemi Shmuel because this Saora, this Karban Omer, is really going to be significant in the sense that it's about a Karban Sibor. It's about the entire congregation coming together. And it culminates by Shavuos when we bring the Shtei Alechem. The Saora is what's being brought, the, the Bikurei Saora is the Karban Omer on the second day of Pesach. And then the culmination is the Bikurei Chita of the Shtei Halechem, that it's so beautiful, it's so poignant that we end off with two breads that are being brought. The significance of the Prat and the Klau coming together in a unified type of fashion. So I think these different time periods, well, these overlapping time periods, that really one one lends itself to the next, one one f- flows one into the next. The idea of the Avelis of Rebbe Kiva's Talmidim and what we're supposed to be accomplished and what we could be metaking, the build-up to Matan Torah and the recognition of the Kabanos that used to be brought and what they signify and what they tell us about the importance of the Klal, I think is something that we are constantly trying to work on. Uh, in terms of Medrash HaRova right now, we finally, Baruch Hashem, right after the Karban Omer was supposed to be brought, uh, right after Pesach, we were able to be unified all together with both our Southern Hemisphere and Northern Hemisphere. And what's so gorgeous is that everyone's enabling each person to feel comfortable, to feel the fit, to feel the the beauty and the ease of of coming together. And in a in a much grander scale, we have now Baruch Hashem experienced skies opening up, travel, you know, limitations on on certain parts of of Corona have lifted, and this really should be able to give everyone the opportunity to reach out to the next person. And just remember about Rabbi Kiva Shalom Agu Kavodzebazet. Hopefully, by learning to respect one another, we'll be able to come to love each other. So let's try to take these lessons of this Sphira Saomer of this time period in order to be able to work on ourselves as individuals in order that we can better appreciate our fellow Jew to come together biyachad in order to be Makabal Shrina with Matan Torah Bezrat Hashem. Have a good Shabbos.